Bernard, having had the um, Canelo Munguia press conference the other day, and um, we got a chance to speak to Canelo. Um, people pressed him about why he's going the Munguia route over the Benavides route, and he just pretty much said something like, you know, if you guys want me to fight Benavides, I'm going to need something along the lines of 150 to $200 million. Um, when a fighter speaks like that, um, what do you make out of it? You know Canelo very well. You, work, you guys helped him get to where he's at. When Canelo says that, in terms of fighting Benavides, obviously not looking past Munguia, but what what do you make of that as a fighter and as a promoter? I, I can I can tell you this as a person that's his business. Uh, I can tell you that as a business man and also as a business, two entities. Um, and then I'll put the third, the fighter at the end. Uh, a fighter will think and react emotionally like a fighter. I fight anybody. And you even heard the ridiculous thing that I might have said or somebody else fighter might have said, I'll fight him for nothing. <laughs> no, you won't. So these are the things that um, emotions uh, want to prove a point until somebody call your bluff and say, okay, you put your purse up, I'll put my purse up. We heard that many times. The commission is not going to allow it, first of all. And then second, Canelo is battle tested from year after year after year. And the biggest, biggest schooling and education that made Canelo the way he is now is having the experience of being there with Floyd Mayweather. And that to me gave him another way to become great later, which is now. It is what it is, whether people like it or don't like it. He took those lessons of schooling on the highest level and injected into his arson, the foundation that he came in there with way back then. And I'm seeing it play out in real time, in real time now. It's going to take a special talent, which I believe we have. And a little help maybe from, you won't be surprised I said this because you remember I retired at 52, right? We're going to need Father Time to start knocking on the back door. The Father Time, he don't tell you when he coming the day before. He just shows up. And it's always at the worst damn time. Canelo is in position to do and what he wants. He's earned that, not given. And if he fights going forward, win, lose, or draw, he has that work that he put in to be able to make the best decisions, business decisions that he needs to make. And everybody is not going to like it. This is business. And I'm going to pause and see where you got this from if you're into rap music. Man. Businessman. And let's not take that away from athletes because no other sport they take it away from. So they because he throw punches from a living and maybe take some every now and then. He still got to think about business and then the ego can come in later. So Canelo in position to do at this stage that I feel at his career and he earned that right. You know how unique that is? That's very unique. Now, you know, everybody got their own reasons why they want this and want that, but no, nah, Canelo owned that right to be able to say, hey, not him yet, not him, but I'll take him last, but I'll take him now. It's no different than having a three-fight deal when HBO was in, 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 in existence or Showtime. It's no different than having a four-fight deal. And they got, in some situations, they had names. Okay, fight Bernard, fight James Tony then fight Roy Jones. I mean, come on. 
he has that right. He earned it. If he didn't, if he didn't have that right to do that, I think I think the conversation would be different. You know, we'd be like, what did he, what did he do? I mean, who he beat? You know, is he all the fame in first ballot? I mean, Canelo has proven that he has credibility to be in this position, and I'm not his promoter, so I don't. I, I'm looking at it like from a fighter's point of view and the position I was in, and I'm looking at it also as um, a promoter.